Hey guys, what's up? Kevin here. I uh, haven't done a video in a while, but here's one right now. Got my FEP Quest here. Um, as you probably know, I've been trying to sell it, but I thought I'd sit down for a second and tell you guys what I really think about it overall as a gun. Now, as most of you guys know, uh, Quest, made by First Endeavor Paintball, their only product to date. Uh, I'm not sure if they're ever going to make anything else. They had some legal issues or financial issues. I think they still technically exist. Uh, I'm not sure if they're currently providing support for these guns, but O-ring kits are easy to find. Parts are pretty easy to find. So if you get a Quest, don't really worry about part availability. As of 2012, it's still pretty high. Um, these things are really solid shooters, I gotta say. Uh, I got this thing in a trade a while back. I really wasn't expecting too much for it from it. Um, but it, it surprised me, actually. Uh, off the bat, one of the things that kind of bothered me was the macro line placement on the high pressure rig, on the zero drop rig, which, you know, is a good rig, good enough. Uh, they had some problems with these early on in the life cycle of the gun. Uh, they weren't seating properly, but they got that fixed. Uh, this one has never had any problems, so. Um, I liked it, but it's just with the gauge here and the macro line fitting, Back in 06 when this gun was made, that was still acceptable. Uh, today, it probably wouldn't fly well with many people. And a lot of people who I handed this gun to at like scrimmages didn't really like it. Me, since I play with such a wide variety of guns, um, I got used to it pretty quickly. Also, I wear gloves, so it doesn't really like protrude. It doesn't like really bother me that much. When I hold it, I usually just put the, the macro line fitting to the palm of my hand, wrap my thumb around the top, and shoot people in. <laughs> works pretty well. I like it. Another great thing about this gun is just it's really simplistic bolt design. It's a spool valve, obviously. From the factory, they didn't come with these uh, quick release, uh, just turnable ones at the back, but it came with this model, so nice. <laughs> this one actually has a polished bolt as well, because uh, at the start when I got this gun, it had some first shot drop-off issues, so I got the bolt polished. It used to be gold on the inside, I don't know if you can see that, but now it's uh, been all polished and that seemed to help quite a bit with that issue. Another cool thing about this gun is unlike its competitor, uh, it was always compared to the Smart Parts Shocker, the SFT and NXT models, but uh, those guns did not come with an LPR and this one that, uh, did. And not many spool valve guns in this price range, which was right around 700 800 bucks in 2006, uh, had LPRs. That was more of a feature reserve for the, uh, the DMs and stuff like that. So it, it was a pretty good shooter. I really enjoy uh, shooting this gun on the field. It doesn't feel like other spool guns. For getting compared to Shocker so much, it really doesn't shoot like them at all, really. Um, its shot signature is more akin to that of a, a well-tuned intimidator, almost. Some people disagree with me, but I just that's how I feel like it shoots. It's kind of funny, if you get one of these used these days, unless it's in pristine condition, usually it's always missing the 007 barrel that FEP made. For some reason, that, that's just become a, a hot commodity to have in paintball, so when I got this one, it came with this Smart Parts Linear 14-inch barrel, which is... It does the job, you know, it, it matches the uh, the gloss black pretty well, so didn't really mind that too much. Mine also didn't come with a gauge, so I threw one on there. The gauge on here doesn't actually monitor the high pressure gauge, it monitors the LPR because you don't want to turn it up too high, you could screw up your noid and no one wants to do that. To do that. Um, another nice thing about this gun, it has a snatch grip, that works. <laughs> Not every gun had those back then. Trigger's pretty nice. Um, feels kind of akin to a critical trigger, although I don't think it was designed by them, maybe just inspired. Kind of has an early scythe design. Feels thoroughly modern, got enough room to walk. Feels good. The boards you can still get flashed today from the Anovic website. Uh, this one is revision 2.2. Um, obviously the eyes work. And uh, it's got all the modes you could ever ask for, really. Quests are just they're good guns. They're just because you know they're not being made. Um, although Criti Critical actually did release a model of this as well as FEP redesigned the body. 
But just because it's not made, you know, I wouldn't um, shy away from these guns too much. They're solid shooters, uh, really good performance. There's not much else to say. I like them. See you guys later.